everybody, today I am in the oldest intact residential neighborhood in all of Indianapolis. I'm in Lockerbie Square. It's actually a historic district. It's the very first neighborhood that was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in Indianapolis. So as you might imagine, there's a lot of history here. There's a lot of significant architecture as well. So we're gonna take a little tour, see what this place has to offer, see where it is. Just talk about it a little bit, so stay tuned. Everybody, I'm Jason Compton, a real estate agent with the Compton Home Group. Welcome back to the channel, and if it's your first time here and you wanna know everything there is to know about living in places like this, Lockerbie Square, or Indianapolis, or any of the surrounding metro and suburbs, then make sure you hit the subscribe button, tap the little bell so you're notified every time we do a new video each and every week. Now we get reach outs from people all over Indianapolis and all over the country with questions about places like Lockerbie Square, all the nearby neighborhoods, Indianapolis, and all the surrounding metro. So if you have questions about any of those, then make sure you reach out any way you know how. We've absolutely got your back with those questions and your move within Indianapolis and to Indianapolis. So today we're in Lockerbie Square, really it's called Lockerbie Square Historic District, but Lockerbie Square is a neighborhood. So if you were to say I live in Lockerbie Square, I'm going to Lockerbie Square, most people in Indianapolis should know about where you're talking about. And it's not a huge neighborhood. We're talking 10-ish acres or so. So as far as a neighborhood goes, that's not very big. But it's the very first residential neighborhood established outside of the original plat for Indianapolis that was laid out by Alexander Ralston a very, very long time ago. So it's the, the very first, at least still intact residential neighborhood outside of that. It's just a little bit northeast of that original plat. And the western edge of Lockerbie Square is East Street. And East Street used to be the eastern edge of Indianapolis proper. And just to the north of here, for the most part, is Massachusetts Avenue, or Mass Ave, like everybody calls it here in Indy, but it's a diagonal street. And if you look at the original plat of Indianapolis, it has a lot of similarities to Washington, D.C., because Alexander Ralston was involved in the planning for Washington, D.C., and came here and, and kind of helped with the the design and, and um, still that same sort of format or same sort of layout of the streets. So several diagonal streets coming off of the circle in Indianapolis and Mass Ave happens to be one of those. So that's the northern border here for Lockerbie Square. Now as you might imagine, a place like this, talking the first residential neighborhood outside of downtown Indianapolis, it is very old. Most of the homes here are built from the 1830s and 1930s and kind of in the mid 1900s or so, it was really run down and there was a big push to revitalize it and restore it. So as you go through this entire area, you'll notice so many homes like this one right here behind me that still hold on to a bit of that Victorian original architecture, which is kind of the, the main theme running through here. Also kind of a, a German style. There's the Antheneum, which is a a building, a historical building very nearby here, and it has the Raskeller restaurant and the beer garden and just completely German themed. So you'll have some of that running through Lockerbie Square here as well, but a lot of that original architecture has been preserved. So there's a little bit of new construction through here, but very, very little for the most part. A lot of homes that have been restored and kind of keeping that historical value to them. So there are plenty of significant people to Indianapolis that have lived in Lockerbie Square, including James Whitcomb Riley, which was a famous poet, lived here for about 20 years, a couple decades or so. And his house is kind of a museum, a uh, place that you can actually visit. But there are several others in this particular neighborhood too. Now, one of the reasons that Lockerbie Square could be popular, it's, it's certainly not for everybody because the homes are very unique uh, with, of course, a lot of unique issues, a lot of unique problems whenever you have very, very old homes. But 
The, the yards, uh, really a lot of times to call them yards is a bit of a stretch. The backs, it's, it's, they're more of gardens than anything, but you know, of course that would be something less to take care of, but the house is gonna be pretty significant. But it is for a lot of people, and the reason that it's so popular, other than just the historical significance of the architecture, is its location. So, like we said at the beginning, it's located just barely northeast of Indianapolis proper. So about three quarters of a mile from the circle, from Monument Circle, which is incredibly close. So you could certainly walk there and bike there, but also it has access to some of the major highways like I-70, I-65, and then you can get to 465 from there. So if you work anywhere in the city or especially in downtown Indianapolis area, then you know, the ease of actually getting to where you need to go is increased. So as you might imagine with a place as old as this, it's gonna have a very established feel. And there are a lot of neighborhoods that surround Indianapolis, but or at least the, the downtown portion of Indianapolis. But a lot of times you'll run into condos and not a lot of opportunity for single family detached homes. So there's several historic neighborhoods like just north of here, there's Chatham Arch. Uh, you've got some along Massachusetts Avenue. And then if you swing around towards the east side, you can get into Fletcher Place and a few other places as well. But this one here is probably more established feeling really than any of those. So when you walk through the neighborhood, you might notice me coming in and out of the sun a little bit. I'm in some shade here now, but it's incredibly shaded. So many huge trees all the way through this neighborhood. And actually, as I'm walking along this path, the sidewalk, if you can see, it's brick. And there are a lot of places where the trees and the roots, they've grown and they've pushed the brick up. But then also this street out here is actually a cobblestone street which is not concrete, it's not asphalt or anything like that. It is a true cobblestone street, which is wildly unique, and you're not gonna find really in any other neighborhood. So as you cross these cobblestone streets, you have to be exceptionally careful uh, that you don't trip on anything that's going through here. But the sound that a car makes going over a brick road or a cobblestone road is really something that is incredibly unique. So there are a lot of unique factors here in Lockerbie Square with just its location of downtown, but also its location of Mass Ave. I told you it's just a little bit south of Massachusetts Avenue, which is a cultural district in Indianapolis and a very big cultural hub. It's a place that has some of the best restaurants in Indianapolis. It has some of the coolest theaters in Indianapolis. Just a lot of places to go and a lot of things to do. The little festivals, they have um, art festivals, they have food festivals, they have all kinds of things going on throughout the entire year. Mass Ave is a draw for everybody, for the most part in Indianapolis, that's looking for entertainment uh, in anything I just mentioned, or even nightlife too. It has some of the best nightlife around Indianapolis, and that is an incredibly short walk from where I'm standing. It's it's probably just uh, about a tenth of a mile or so from where I'm standing. You can get a little further south in Lockerbie Square, and it's a little bit further than that, but Lockerbie Square is only 10 or so acres, so not all that big and extremely close to a lot of those things that downtown Indianapolis is gonna have to offer. So in a place like Lockerbie Square, people have asked me before, you know, what am I close to as far as the things that I need? You know, it's great that I'm close to restaurants and unique shops and bars and things like that, but. Are there any chain restaurants? Are there any big box stores? And the answer, for the most part, is no. I mean, you're gonna have a few chains here and there, but for the most part, everything's pretty unique. And as far as the big box stores, like a, a Walmart, a Target, a Lowe's, a Home Depot, any place like that, they're not really all that close to here. You're gonna have to drive to get to those. But grocery store, that's okay. There is a, a really nice grocery store called Needler's uh, really close by, walking distance. So you're not short on that. But like I said, a place like this can be for a lot of people, but also it might not be for some people. You know, if you have schools on your mind, if you've got that big box store shopping mentality on your mind or just need to do those kinds of things like a Sam's Club or a Costco included, you're gonna have to drive to get to those. They're not gonna be very convenient. But people that don't necessarily need those all that often or don't want those at all, this could be a little better fit for you. So Lockerbie Square, if you're interested in walkability, things to do, bikeability, 
and just a lot of history and architecture, it could be a fit for you. Now, as you might imagine, Lockerbie Square with all of those things, including how small it is and how many choices you'd actually have in this particular area, it's going to be pretty pricey. So just to get a single family detached home in here, I mean, you were, we're talking 500 thousand for something that's pretty reasonable it's no surprise at all and it can certainly go up from there depending on the size of the home so is it a fit for you i don't know but if you do like all of those things you'd have to just expect to to pay a little bit of the price for for a lot of those but if you have further questions about lockerbie square or any of the neighborhoods surrounding the downtown proper portion of indianapolis then make sure that you reach out or if you have questions about anywhere in Indy or the surrounding metro. And until the next one, we'll see you later.